And everybody says, man, I, Mark, I'm turned as far as I possibly can. It's not turning anymore. It's once you make that tremendous turn is relaxing and letting your wrists, letting the club settle. <laughs> Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the most efficient golf swing for seniors and I'm going to give you three things you can do if you're a senior golfer to make your golf swing the most efficient. But before we get to that, I've really enjoyed bringing this free content to you and our YouTube community, it's growing and I want it to continue to grow and you can help us with that. And the way you can do that is like this video when it's over subscribe to my YouTube channel and the easiest way to do that is just click on that riddle, little red button in the corner of this video and it just alerts you and lets you know when I have new videos available for you to watch and then comment ask questions let us know of any video ideas you might have okay so I teach in Naples Florida I've taught in Naples Florida most of my professional teaching career and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Naples, Florida, it is a retired community. And so I'm not going to say I am the foremost authority as it comes to senior golfers, but I can tell you that it's probably 95% of the people that I teach. And I've done that for a long time, and I've done a large volume of people. So through these years of teaching, senior golfers I certainly have some experience and I want to share that experience with you and the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to go over uh, a few things three things as a matter of fact that you can do to make your golf swing more efficient if you're a senior golfer so I want to dive right into it you know what's the first thing that I can do that'll help me if I'm a senior golfer and it has to do with the setup and I like to see more of a strong grip and if you don't have a strong grip I want a strong club face at the top of the backswing and so everybody's like looking at their screen right now like okay what's he talking about and we're gonna go over it so the first thing remember I play left-handed so if you're a right-handed golfer just switch it around but a strong grip would be and this doesn't matter if you're right or left-handed but it would be both hands turned away from the target so as a lefty, and, and I'm shooting that way, my hands would be turned, both of them, right and left hand, would be turned away from the target. So my right hand would be more on top, my left hand would be more under. If I'm a right-handed golfer shooting this way, both hands turned away from the target, I would be turning them this way. So my, I would find my left hand more on top and my right hand more under. And again, I'll get into why in, in just a little bit. So typically when we see a stronger grip, so I'm going to get a real strong grip here with my, my right and left hand, typically we see the club go back a little more shut and we see it a little more shut at the top of the backswing. Think John Rahm, Dustin Johnson. This really helps us in the downswing, which I'll get into that in just a moment. So I do have a saying at my golf school, change a grip, lose a student. And sticking with that, I'm going to give you another alternative if you're like, hey, I've been down the change the grip road before and I'm not going there again. So if you're somebody who has more of a neutral or even a bit of a weak grip, and I have another video about this, I'll pop up there so you can see it. But another way we can do that is just keep the grip that you have, but make sure that you're swinging it in what I refer to as strong positions. So halfway back, the club is pointed to the ground at the top of the backswing. It's oriented more towards the sky. Again, Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, you'd see this with. Here's the really important one, which I know you're getting tired of hearing this from Mark Durland. But halfway down, again, it's pointed more towards the ground, more towards the golf ball. And that'll really help me with my impact alignments and hitting the ball more solid. So. Why, why do I need to do this, Mark? What, what do you see that would make you say that this is the first thing that you would do to fix and make my golf swing more efficient? So the reason is with most senior golfers, as they take the club back, I see a lot of opening of the face, 
a lot of opening of the club at the top of the swing and very open on the downswing which requires a tremendous amount of flipping and timing in their golf swing and to be perfectly honest it takes a lot of strength to close that tour players that's what they do better than your everyday amateurs they close that club face really fast in transition and it takes a tremendous amount of hand strength and arm strength and as we become a senior golfer we start to lose some of that and I always say to my students you know you don't run as fast as you used to you don't jump as high as you used to um, so there's just adjustments that we need to make to, to make our, our golf swing more efficient so if we can get this club face in stronger positions it gets rid of all that rolling and then the most important thing because I do see seniors that have the face strong or closed but then as soon as they start their downswing because they're not strong enough to keep it closed or to close it more is they go the other direction they they actually open it and there's a lot of other forces working on you too I'm not going to delve into that but there's forces you're putting into the golf club there's forces the golf club is putting back into you that makes this uh, more challenging than, than one might think when you really break down the science of it. So again, in review, first thing, if you can, stronger grip, stronger uh, lead hand, stronger trail hand, depending on if you're a left or right-handed player. So that's just turning them both away from the target, left-handed player, right-handed player this way. If you decide that the grip is not for you or you don't like what you see, the other way we can do it is just by controlling the face in our swing and just getting it you know halfway back the face is pointed to the ball top of the back swing it's pointed more to the sky halfway down which is the most important one it's pointing to the golf ball so that's the first thing I'm gonna do to get your golf swing more efficient and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit one I'm, I'm gonna strengthen my grip I'm gonna swing the club in a little bit more closed positions for you so first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the grip much stronger than I usually have it and I'm going to work on just getting this club in more closed positions. Yeah so that, I don't know if you could hear, that sounded really good and it felt great and it was a lower ball flight for me because I was managing uh, that club face a lot better. So that's the first thing that we're going to start with. Now what's the next thing? and this is a biggie and I can't tell you <laughs> the students can I can't tell you how many times in a lesson with somebody who comes to me that's a senior golfer they're frustrated they're hitting non-functional golf shots they've lost tremendous yardage really what I feel like I get them doing is moving again so here's what I mean by that it's not like the day things start going bad I see the student the next day this is usually months, maybe even a year or more of seeing themselves struggle with their golf game and they finally break down and they're going to go get a lesson. So by the time they get to me, they figured out like, hey, if I make this much of a backswing and, and a turn, I can at least like bun it around the golf course and, and get around, not embarrass myself, shoot a score, hang out with my friends, be social, you know, all the things that, that we want to do when we play golf. And so they, they get to me and, and they have no club head speed because length of arc, you know, they've eliminated all the levers in their golf swing, the length of their arc is short, and so there's just no way they could possibly create club head speed. So the first thing I do is I get them moving again and always the thing that I hear is wow I feel so out of control and you're gonna feel out of control and here's what I have to say about that is I don't want my students out of control when they're playing golf but I think very good golf gets played from towing the line of out of control and this past weekend was Bryson DeChambeau winning the US Open and <laughs> I would say he's towing definitely towing that line of being out of control in his golf swing. So some things that you can do to start moving again. Um, I'm a big fan of if you want to kind of stand like a penguin or like a duck and point your toes out a little bit. This will make it easier for you to release your hips and get good turn. I don't mind you dropping the trail foot back to get a little deeper to get a little bit more turn some other things I've shot in other videos is, is just taking and turning away from the target and getting a big stretch and and turning the other way 
All those things are really important. Now, there's one more thing we have to talk about with getting moving again, is a lot of people start to eliminate the lever. They, start, they stop hinging, okay? So they get to the top of their backswing, they've got plenty of shoulder turn, but they've never hinged the club. So it looks like a three-quarter swing. It looks like this. And what I would have you do is just start to get rid of the tension. That's the other thing is I see a tremendous amount of tension because everything has been falling apart for so long that they really just can't create that second lever, that hinging at the top of the backswing, the next lever in the golf swing. So let's get rid of that tension. Let's feel like the swing is longer. I don't even mind if, you know, kind of John Daly-ish. I don't even mind if the, if the elbows break down a little bit. Just anything to get it longer. But the secret to that, and everybody says, man, I, Mark, I'm turned as far as I possibly can. It's not turning anymore. It's once you make that tremendous turn is relaxing and letting your wrist, letting the club settle. And again, I'm lengthening the arc. I'm taking the club head from here all the way to here. And that gives me more time and more potential for club head speed. So the second thing is just get moving. And you know, open your feet a little bit. I'm going to walk through this. So I'm just going to open both my feet a little bit. I'm going to drop my left foot back, which is my trail foot. See if I can get a little greater turn. And I'm going to let it get soft and really hingy at the top of the backswing. Now that I have my new, improved, strong grip. Yeah, and same thing again. Felt really good, really solid. Felt faster to me. Definitely feel like I'm moving. All right, so we've knocked out two of the three things. What's the third and final thing? And this may be, I don't know, it's hard to quantify, but I, I would almost say this would be the most important thing. And what I see, once I get these students to me, I kind of get them going and everything. They're towing the line of out of control but they get done with their swing and they're rocking back here, they're stepping back. So, and I know it's challenging, I'm not asking to do something easy here. I'm speeding up your swing, I'm making you more dynamic. And now we're gonna talk about the balance component of it. And what I refer to as a PGA Tour finish, which I've talked about before in other videos. And what that is very simply is when I finish my golf swing, my trail toe is pointed, is in the ground, my belt buckles to the target, and the club is over my lead shoulder, which for a lefty, that's my right shoulder. But again, the most important part of this is it's in balance. So I could hold this finish the rest of the afternoon if I had to, just watching, posing on my shot. We see it all the time uh, on weekends of a PGA Tour event. They strike a shot, they know they struck it well, it's headed right at the target, and they just hold it. So that would be the third thing to make your golf swing the most efficient as a senior golfer. Strengthen that grip, get yourself moving, and then stick that PGA Tour finish in balance. So let's see if uh, I can put that swing together. All right, I got my strong grip. I've flared out my feet a little bit to just make myself turn a little more, maybe drop this foot back a little bit. I'm just going to really focus on a big, long, wristy, hingy sort of turn, and I'm going to stick that PGA Tour finish. So again, felt good, felt much more dynamic. You do these three things and you're a senior golfer, it's going to help your game. So now you know the most efficient swing you can make if you're a senior golfer. I gave you three things that you can work on that's going to help you be more efficient. The first was either tweaking the grip or getting that club face stronger somehow. The next thing was get moving. You know, open your feet if you have to, put your trail foot back, get it longer, get it hingier. And then the last thing was sticking that PGA Tour finish in balance. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have two more here right now that I promise will continue to help you improve your game. And remember, please like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and comment.